Hello YouTubers and welcome to another episode. Today, as you can tell from the title, talk a little bit about heat acclimatization. So, this has kind of sparked not just by yesterday, but really hit home yet after yesterday's 5k, but also over the last couple of weeks as it's got sort of hotter and fluctuated in temperature. Last week, last week was reasonably cool and cool here, so 10 degrees Celsius or so, approaching peaks of summer, or at least in summer. And this week, sort of mid-twenties. Last week felt a huge difference between the cool and then versus this week, the hot temperatures. Yesterday, did a 5K, and I think one of the biggest things was I was super ready, super warmed up, and already had pretty much reached my body's capacity of cooling almost before I started. So that's kind of on me to help my body deal with uh, the heat, but also on me as well for like not making sure the room was cool enough or the area that I was airing was cool enough to actually do the air. For example, getting a fan. And don't worry, Yam Squad, a fan w is on its way. It's just unfortunately has been delayed over, I think it's, it's been delayed for a while, like a week or, or more now. But it said, the delivery has finally said this week is the week that I'll be getting it. I think Thursday or, or Wednesday maybe, but we'll see. I'll we'll have a little chat about the fan when it does arrive, which hopefully will help with cooling down if it does get hot. But what I've been concerned about lately is, okay, if I'm drastically, if I feel great in the cool and then when it gets hot, I really struggle. What if say it comes race day and it's, uh, peak of summer, say, if, so a Henley Raw Regatta next year is really, really hot, and am I ready, or how would I prepare to race in a hot situation, a hot scenario? Well, obviously, there's different things you can do to cool yourself down, like, for example, if we're on the air, getting a fan, making sure the room is cold, if you're lucky enough to have AC, unfortunately, here in England, or in Britain in general, air conditioning is generally not something that we have in our homes, but that's an option for some. Um, and there's other things like wearing cooling vests or or things you can do to cool yourself down. Or, and this is kind of where I'm going today, is you can help your body adapt to the heat. And basically, by almost forcing it to be hotter than it normally would be, and then trying to let it adapt over time. So, hence why I have this t-shirt on today for this erg. I'm not gonna actually take it off today, and I'm going to be sweating an awful lot. So, I will be drinking throughout this erg to replenish some of the fluids I'll be losing, but the idea of having a t-shirt on is obviously it's gonna make me hotter, which will have an impact on my splits, but I have my heart rate monitor on, so I'll be keeping track of my heart rate monitor, making, making sure I'm in the right zones. But the idea is, obviously not just, it's not just gonna be, okay, I do a hot air today and then tomorrow it's gonna be easy. It's over the next uh, two, three, four weeks, I'm going to try and do the easier airs with a t-shirt on and see if there's a difference at all because I have been doing a little bit of research on acclimatization and acclimation and seeing that it can't, there's, you can make differences in a couple of weeks and I would quite like to see if differences can be made, especially because I feel like whether it's I'm as an individual are quite susceptible, quite sensitive to temperature changes or if that's just a thing that everybody is and I've been used to erging and working out in the cool and when it does get hot then I'm not used to it. So what I'm going to do, like I said, erg with this t-shirt on and I'll give a little bit of a review of the difference between sort of top off, top on and then eventually the aim would be for my body to be able to cool down with more than a t-shirt on. But obviously that doesn't just, that's not just how it works. Uh, your body can reach a maximum cooling potential at some stage and maybe my maximum cooling potential with a t-shirt on is too much and I'll have to not do that and have to figure other ways like having a fan or other things you can do to make your body better at dealing with hot temperatures. But now it's time to get on the erg for a little stroll in the park, 90 minutes, nice and steady, 
I fear that this one could be a bit of a tough one, but like I said, I'm going to just stay in the heart rate zones. The split's going to be what the split's going to be. If it's above two minutes, it's above two minutes. If it's normal, sort of mid 50s, it's going to be normal. And I will be probably extra sweaty. So I'd normally sweat a lot anyway. So we'll see how much more I sweat. Like I said, I've got some juice, just a bit of squash to ha keep hydrating through this session. I'm going to stick on some YouTube, learn about things and see how we get on. So I'll see you after this wonderful time lapse. And we've finished the hottest erg yet. And a little bit, let's check the heart rate, it's a little bit higher than usual as it comes down into the average section down there. So an average of 128 which as you can tell from the split as well is a little bit unexpected if i wasn't wearing a t-shirt so obviously my body was working harder during this erg even though the splits were slower so i started off slow or than usual uh, 57s just just in case pretty glad i did because around sort of around half an hour pretty much every time I get into a, it's like if I make it through half an hour and it feels good, it's going to feel good for the rest. If I make it through half an hour and it feels not good, it's not going to feel good for the rest. So, the t-shirt, not exactly a super athletic and breathable material, made it hotter. Who would have thunk it? So what that did, it's felt like I've sweated a bit more and like I said, it's, it's stressed the body a bit more because it's trying to cool down more instead of having the top off and helping the sweat evaporate it's making it hotter underneath the t-shirt and therefore making the body hotter and trying to cool down so like i said at the start the whole idea of this is to make it hotter than it is so on the easy ergs it's still it should be just as easy but the body is adapting to the heat rather than trying to hold the same splits in a hot environment. That's why like yesterday, or one of the reasons yesterday, when it's really hot and trying to push harder than usual, we start to run into problems. And that's like I've been saying over the last few weeks about the right zone intensities. You could be doing zone two, three, four, five, six. For me, I'm trying to be UT2 zone two for this erg and that meant slowing down the split. A lot of people have been asking, oh, I've been in a, I've been trying to stick to the right zone and regardless of the zone, whatever it is, and I want to, before going into the next zone, uh, before stepping up to say zone three to four or four to five or two to three, I have to slow down to keep my heart rate in that zone. Yes, that is, that's the science behind it. It's slowing the heart rate down or at least keeping the heart rate down by trying less hard in a workout to stay in that zone. And the reason you have to basically push less or pull less hard towards the end of a workout, there's a cardiac drift. So basically as you get more fatigued, as you burn more energy, as your energy sources deplete on top of being more and more dehydrated during a longer workout, your body is then working harder, therefore not just the effort that you're putting out is creating the stress, but also just trying to keep cool and trying to get more energy from other sources, etc., making your body work harder and then pushing the heart rate up. So then you have to reduce the stress from somewhere and the easiest place to reduce the stress from somewhere that you can control really easily, apart from dumping ice across your face or getting a fan on, the other one is reducing the effort and it doesn't have to be a lot maybe two splits a split sometimes it can be a lot more like for example today if it was a lot hotter combined with the t-shirt i would have to slow down more and that's this is five or six splits lower slower than uh saturday uh, the last 90 minutes i did and that's okay it's in the right zone and i'm working in the right places for my targets and your targets might be different so therefore your zones might be different but as i've been saying it's all about what works best for you and training in your zones. But back to the sort of acclimatization or acclimation to the heat, 
step one, day one of this. It wasn't as bad as I thought, but it was a lot slower and I anticipated that. So if I wasn't in, if I tried to hold the same split, it would have been heinous. And I was in actually a little bit higher than usual in the normal duty two zone for me, but still in the zone, still right bang in the middle. So it's still good there. So positive workout going to keep going with sort of t-shirt on the erg but obviously if it is super hot super super hot then maybe just accepting that that's the temperature that I'm going to have to get used to rather than if it's 30 outside trying to make it 40 inside that kind of thing there's there's limits to the adaptations but that will be it for today's episode jam squad hopefully you've enjoyed it just doing something a little bit different because remember variation can be one of the keys to motivation and I'm going to fuel up because I'm quite hungry even after a low intensity session, but regardless of the intensity session, food is always fuel. And I will see you, is this Tuesday? I will see you in tomorrow's episode. Maybe I'll get that fan tomorrow. Oh yeah.